We welcome everyone to worship on this Sunday morning. I know we're not gathered together in God's house as we would like to be, but that does not mean we're still not dwelling in his presence. It's always good to be in the presence of the Lord. And let's keep that thought in mind as we focus on our worship this morning and truly open up our hearts to hear what he has to say to us. Let's bow for a moment of prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, as we call upon your name this day, we are grateful for the love that you have shown to each and every one of us. You know what burdens different ones may be carrying this morning. There may be that one that is discouraged. There may be that one who has sin that needs to be confessed. There may be that one who needs healing. You know what everyone's need is, and we would just ask that in this time that we set aside, we might just hear what you have to say to us. Your blessed holy name we do ask it. Amen. I'd like us to take a minute as we start our worship this morning to sing the song as the deer. scripture reading this morning, I would invite you to turn with me to the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, and I will begin reading at verse 17. If you invoke as Father, the one who judges all people impartially, according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. 
now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine, mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not by perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. Precious Heavenly Father, we just ask that you would open your word to us this morning. May we be guided and directed by what you have to say to us. In your holy name we do ask it. Amen. Most of us like to feel that we're in control of whatever situation we're dealing with. Usually, as long as we think we have something in control, uh, we can handle it. But things, when they get out of control, we face frustration and anxiety. Oh, I know it's a little different than like um, when a husband and father is riding as a passenger in the car. I remember uh, visiting my son in Wyoming one time, and he asked if the imaginary brake on my side of the car, on the passenger side, still functioned. In other words, uh, he was implying that I was trying to correct his driving from the passenger seat. Um, Valerie was quick to assure him that I did the same when she drove, and uh, well, I, I guess to make it perfect, uh, when we were on vacation a couple years ago and we were driving and the posted speed limit in South Dakota said 80 and I looked over to see what Jason was doing, um, he said, this would be a good time for you to take a nap. So that sometimes, you know, the coaching and interference isn't always uh, appreciated. The bottom line is, sometimes it is very hard to surrender and let someone else take care of what we are dealing with. I think that's probably one of the most frustrating things about the situation that our country finds itself in at this time. Most of us who, who were used to going where we wanted to, doing what we wanted to do, uh, it's a very different thing to have some of the restrictions that we have now. Now it's all for our good. It's important. And it's important that we follow the directions, but that doesn't make it any less frustrating sometimes. But one of the things that we do need to remember is no matter how out of control we feel things are, we are still in the hands of one who is in control. Oh, I still shudder to think what some barbers and hairstylists are going to say when they try to correct uh, some of the things that we tried to do to help ourselves during this time, that's another issue altogether. Verse 17 of our scripture lesson this morning, however, reminds us, if you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. This in no way implies that we are to be afraid of God. Nothing could be further from the truth. But we should look at him as the awesome and powerful one who has all things in his hands. Live in reverent fear. Not being afraid, but knowing that he has the power to do what is right to meet our needs, and to correct if we need corrections. I was still reminded a little bit, you know, we're always impressed by things that have power. I remember uh, visiting Niagara Falls not long ago, and when you just see the power of that water flowing over the brink, it's amazing. It's beautiful to watch. You can't help but be amazed by the power that is displayed there. As long as you stay on the sidewalk, stay behind the fences, you can enjoy its beauty and not have to worry at all about danger. If, however, you choose to toy with the power, well, woe be to you. I remember when they give the tour, they always refer to the one spot in the Niagara River as the point of 
of no return. That water is powerful enough that it cuts that rock ledge that it overflows as much as six inches a year back towards Lake Erie. So, if you enter that water too close to the falls, it doesn't matter how many people want to do something, the current is so strong, the only place you're going is over. You need to respect the power that is there. Sometimes we just feel at ease when we know someone is in power to control a situation. I remember one time um, the lady complimented me for, you know, calmly taking care of the situation. I'm glad no one took my blood pressure at the time. But when we feel like we're in control of something or can handle something, it's okay. And I, I was visiting in a lady's home, and um, while we were sitting in the living room, there was a loud pop in the kitchen. She had been heating, supplementing her heat with her electric oven, and uh, there was a loud pop and flash, and the inside of the oven was all in flames. Well, I... Since she was 90 years old, I ran to the kitchen and uh, turned the oven off. And actually, nothing was even damaged. They uh, replaced the heating element in the oven, and everything was fine. But again, she felt at ease because I was taking care of the situation. I'm glad no one took my blood pressure when it was done. That's, a, that's another situation altogether. However, we need to be reminded that no matter how out of control everything seems around us, we are still in the hands of a great and powerful and awesome God. As this passage was written, it says the time of your exile. Well, at that time, anyone who was following Jesus was going against all the traditions of the culture at that time. The culture at that time valued anything historic, and age was supposedly a basis for truth. And now, as some of them had accepted Jesus Christ, they were bringing something new in, and that was hard, and they felt like they were out of place. Listen, there are times when we are living our lives by God's law by God's principles, because we have had our sins forgiven, that we feel out of place in the world around us. But guess what? We are there. We are in his hand. We're supposed to be there, to be his witnesses, to reveal who he is to those around us. But we know that we can trust in his power. Living in reverent fear has nothing to do with being afraid. It reminds us that he is mighty in power and how he wants to empower us. His awesome power is greater than the power of sin. We all know that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But Jesus' death on the cross bought our redemption. His resurrection from the dead shows his power over sin and even over death. Listen, we're never going to reach a state in our life where we're not going to experience temptation. But the one thing that we will learn is we do not overcome temptation. His power living in us is what helps us to overcome temptation and sin. I would just remind it again as we look at everything that is going on around us, some of us are wondering, will our world be the same as it was before? In reality, some things will be, some things may not be. The important thing is, the awesome power of God is still on the throne. We can look forward to a future that may be different. But our future goes beyond the life in which we are now living. It goes all the way to his eternal kingdom where we can be a part of his peace forever. 
One of the things that we sometimes need to learn, I think we sometimes try to get through life by using the imaginary break, trying to control things that we can't. I think most of us have seen this, but I remember going to an auto uh, repair shop one time, and the mechanic had a sign posted on the wall. It said, hourly labor rate, $50 an hour. And I guess it's higher than that now, but that's all right. $50 an hour. If you watch, the labor rate goes up to $75 an hour. And if you help, the rate goes up to $100 an hour. The key to the message is let the person who knows what he's doing take care of the problem. You know what? If we can learn to surrender our situation to Jesus, then it's not us dealing with it. It is him. One of the hardest things that we have to do sometimes is to be willing to let go of our control on a situation. We like to keep our foot on that brake. By the way, my imaginary brake never stopped the car. It never corrected where the driver was going in the lane. It didn't do any good. So the best thing I could do would have been to sit back and enjoy the ride, as hard as that might be. But sometimes that's what we have to do in the circumstances that we're dealing with. I am reminded of, uh, I once took a group of Boy Scouts to a water safety class. And one of the things they said, sometimes if you're trying to rescue someone from the water, Believe me, no one depend on me to rescue them from the water. I would be the one that needed rescued from the water. But the point is, I was listening to the instructions. And they said, if you're trying to rescue someone and they grab you in such a way that you lose control of swimming, the most important thing you can do is to duck your own head under the water, and then they refocus on doing what you are supposed to, what they're supposed to do to let you rescue them. How many of us are really letting God be the one who directs our life? How many of us are trying to correct him? Now, we, we laugh at that. We say, you mean we're trying to correct God? Yes, sometimes, subconsciously, we do. Let us remember, he sits on the throne in awesome power. He provided for all of our needs. He loves us, he cares for us, and he wants us to be a part of his eternal kingdom. We can rest assured that all things are in his hand. And just as when someone comes who is able to take control of a difficult situation in our lives, we know that he is on the throne, not just for our needs, but for the needs of everyone. Let us truly rejoice in his presence. Let's truly rejoice in who he is. Let us follow him in reverent fear, not because we're afraid, but because we recognize the mighty power that he has. And may we truly just rejoice in being in his presence. Let's bow for a moment of prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. We would ask, that we would be able to do one of the hardest things for us to do, to let go and let you have your way. To let us surrender to you and take control of every phase of our life. To let go and let you be the one who leads us, not just for now, but for all eternity. I would like us to sing in closing this morning the old hymn of the church, Arise, My Soul, Arise. Thank you.